Hey, what's up coaches? Coach Dave Bishop here uh, for RTDB. Want to remind you that today is session two of our BLAST series. And if you're not sure what BLAST is for us, that is our ISO play um, out of our multiple wing T offense. Last week, we talked a little bit about our running back alignment and steps, as well as our quarterback's footwork. Today, we want to talk about our offensive line play. I'll make some adjustments to some of the things we talked about last week with our backs in the backfield and how they make those adjustments today according to what the linemen are doing in front of them. And then uh, I want to show you some cut-ups. I'm going to try something new today. We're going to try to um, telestrate some of the things through uh, the software that I have. And then also want to prepare you for next week, which will be hopefully our last session on the blast, which will be our complimentary plays and passes out of our blast series. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get into our offensive line rules for our blast series. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to spend a ton of time. I'm going to go through these pretty quick, but our, our basic rule for our play side tackle. Actually, I'd like to start if we do have a tight end, I want to talk about him. His rules are uh, on outside, outside. Okay. And uh, our play side tackle as well as on outside, outside. Now, here's where things get a little bit tricky and things get a little bit different is if there is a B gap defender, he's going to give a call and let the guard know that they have to perform an X block. A lot of the traditional wing T guys talk about it being XB. Uh, our line splits are a lot different. We're two foot, two foot, three foot. So uh, it's a little difficult for us to X block everything. But that when you get that B-gap defender, he's going to give a call, and we're going to perform what we call a text block, okay, uh, between him and the guard. And then also what we do is if we've got a situation where there's a linebacker walked up to the line of scrimmage after we call the play, um, they're going to give a call, whatever you want to call it. You want to call it a down call, whatever you want to give it a call. Sometimes you may not need a linebacker walked up, but if you have a two eye and a four eye, it's kind of the same situation because they've canceled the A gap and the B gap. And, and we'll show you how to do that. Our play side guard, his rules are gap on backside linebacker. He may have a possible text situation with the play side tackle. And his rule is to go ahead and block the first defender past that play side tackle. Our center on backside linebacker, key, always step play side first to secure that play side a gap um, and then he may perform what we call a switch call between him and the backside guard so if we've got a two eye backside he and the guard will switch uh, you saw some of that and what it looked like in our um, midline series and then our backside guys are going to scoop and they backside guard may have that switch call so he'll wrap around that uh <clears throat> wrap around the center and get that backside linebacker. So there is a possibility there if he's not scooping and trying to get across anybody's face that they may get a switch call there. So let's take a, a quick look at some of the diagrams and what that may look like, okay? And so you'll have to bear with me. I'm gonna to have to move my head around several times. So uh, this is probably our most simple front to block. So if we're, we're facing an even front and we've got a two eye and a five, I don't care where it is whether it's strong or weak, and, and how we really get the best and most mileage out of this play is to allow our quarterback to make the call um, at the line of scrimmage. So we can call blast, and if we're facing an even front, we know that they're even. He's going to find that two eye and five if possible, and he's going to call the play to that two eye and five. So uh, it's pretty simple. We've got that down block here because he's got an angle. He's on an inside. He's going to turn out. Now, what we like to do is we always like to have our halfback take some type of slide step. So he's going to slide, gain ground, and get into the hole. All right. Uh, there's been times where we would take this guy and we'd straight step and get in there as fast as we can. What I like to do is try to keep the footwork uh, same as possible. If, if, if we can do that, it would be preferable because we don't want to have the kid have to think, well, on this play, I have to do this step. Uh, this front, I have to do this step. So... What we want to do is we want to go ahead and um, slide step and get inside. All right. If I've got an even front and I've got a three and a five to the side that we are running the play. All right. So let's just say we have two, three techniques. All right. I probably wouldn't be running blast there. Probably either running trap or quarterback sneak. But if we do get a three and a five, we're going to text that. So that tackles down first. The guard's kicking out. This 
step right here should allow enough time for that back to get through and, and blast on that uh, linebacker. All right. For some reason, we can't see this. So uh, let me get to a full screen here. Uh, my apologies. All right, here we go. That looks a little bit better. And then I'm going to have to move my head. So if we have an even front and we've got a walked up linebacker, so we've got that wheel linebacker. You can see him right here. He's walked up at the line of scrimmage. Well, it's hard for this guy to get in here and get movement. So we give a call. Let's just call it a down call because if you notice, he's down, he's down. And what we do is we're going to kick with that last man on the line of scrimmage with this play side halfback. So that secures all of our gaps where we got two bigs here and we've got a kick here. And that guy's going to insert in between the down block of our tackle as well as our kick block of our halfback. So again, come up with a call, whatever it is you want to call it. And, uh, you know, just make it simple. Those guys know that there's somebody walked up. They've got to make sure that it's blocked. Now, over here, we've got an even front, but we've got a switch call and a text call. So um, over here on the back side, okay, we're texting it on the front side, just like we saw up here. So we've got a three and a five. We're running it over here. Uh, you see your center blocking back on the two eye. That guard's wrapping around, and he's picking up that backside linebacker. Again, you can look at the diagrams. I don't want to spend a lot of time on them today, but you guys have all this that you can go over uh, multiple times over the next few weeks. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the odd front. And let me move my head again. Let me get, oh, okay, perfect. I don't have to move it one time. So if we got an odd front, uh, a lot of the three, four teams today like to line head up. And that may or may not cause issues, but to me, it's an issue because sometimes they're stunting, sometimes they're basing. So what we do is we tell this guy to attack. And if he can get inside relationship and turn that guy out, great. If not, take him where he's going to go. This halfback's going to slide step. And he's going to run at the butt of that tackle. And what's going to happen is he's going to read. So if this guy bows inside, he's going to come around the backside of the tackle. If this guy gets to turn him out, he's going to read it and come on inside. Okay. Again, we've got um, on backside right here. He's going to go ahead and take a play side step and work to the backside linebacker. We've still got the sweep guy that we talked about last week. And we've got scoop, scoop. And this guy should be stepping and hinging in a high wall and backside as tight end. Uh, I think we discussed it last week. One of the reasons why we do that is because we like to run the blast and run a tight end screen uh, back to the tight end. So he's always looking the same on this. Now, you can have an odd front, and let's say they give you a four-eye backside. It's no different than having a three and a five against an even front. So, again, we're going to get a text call over here because he's got a B-gap defender. He's going to block down. He's going to kick out. We're going to take that slide step, and we're going to look for that kick-out block right here and just try to slide in between and get that block on that linebacker. The hardest block to make here, though, is this backside guard because he has got to scoop and block the backside linebacker. So what you find a lot of young guys and inexperienced guys, they're going to run right at this guy, and he's going to run over to the top. So you want to run through the heel line of that nose guard, okay, especially if he steps. Now you can pick him up. Uh, if you know that you've got stunners that week, you can work that little zone concept between these two guys and work level one to level two, all right? Scoop, high wall, again, my sweep guy. All right. Now, 3-3 three, three stack. If they play base, a lot of 3-3 three, three stack guys do for some reason. I do not know why they don't do firing in near as much as what they used to years ago. To me, that causes a whole lot more havoc. And what you end up with is they'll get you, but you're going to get them and gash them from time to time. So the, the mindset is no different. All right. We'll never block that play side linebacker with a lineman. All right, we're never going to block the play side linebacker with a lineman unless he's walked up. So we've got 3-3 three, three stack. He's going to, now the difference is he's going to run straight at this guy, okay, again, because of what we're doing. So these two are essentially responsible for those two, all right? The um, play side guard, he's going to take care of the Mike linebacker. Center's going to take care of the nose. Backside guard, just like you saw, he's going to step play side, take care of the backside linebacker. We're going to scoop and we're going to high wall. All right. So that is it in a nutshell. 
you're going to be able to go back and look at this stuff and listen, please um, send me emails, send me questions. I know I've got several this week and uh, some folks want to see some new concepts coming in. Uh, they want to look at counter as well as some of our play action pass. And we, we've got that. Uh, so again, keep sending me emails, coach Bishop at coachboard.com. You can comment on the YouTube channel and ask questions as well as uh, DM me uh, on at coach board one or at, I'm sorry, at coach Bishop one on Twitter. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these cutups. All right. And, and guys, just to be honest with you, I've not got a lot of experience at this and I'm having to learn because uh, it's different and uh, I got to double click everything. So, so bear with me if I do mess it up. So what we've got, we got an even front over here. All right. But notice the alignment of the halfback. He is too far forward. And so what you're going to get, this looks like a three technique. So I believe, so you're going to get a text call. Okay. Maybe not a text call. Sorry, just the angles. So what you've got here, but notice, right? My halfback, he doesn't allow that tackle who's playing too high to get any movement. Right. And he ends up smashing that guy in the back if it were a text block it would be even worse all right he would just run smack dab into the back so that little zone step that we like to do all right does help i love the guy he gets in there and he plays hard but at the same time it, it is an issue all right okay let me uh back this up we've got a uh uh a basically a twin set so it's uh, twins with a tight closed over here and we're gonna run blast to the weak side we're gonna run blast this guy should be blast block and we don't have a sweep back so our rule is if you don't have a sweep back the quarterback is the controller for the outside linebacker the other pieces you do have twins over here so you have three over two which helps eliminate guys out of the box all right so from what I see here is we're going to get a uh, base look like a two eye. So he should be blocking here. He should be blocking here. Your center should end up being up on that linebacker right there. Well, wow, okay. That's interesting. All right. We should get a scoop here and a scoop. Now I believe this week we, because of some of the guys and what they were doing, I believe we high walled backside with the tackle. Um, again, game plan from what you might see. All right, now this back right here, about a buck 40 at best. Watch him come in here and, and put it on the linebacker. All right, now he gives him everything he's got. But because of that, we end up, all right, we end up breaking that tackle because of great block by him. All right, fullback does a great job breaking tackles and picking up extra yardage after contact. This is a team that loves to run 3-3, and we figured out how to get them to break the stack in the first half. And they were pretty successful at stopping us, but we were able to uh, run some stuff that got them out of the stack. And so in the second half, this is the first series, they're in a traditional 3-4. They're playing all head up, all right? So because they're playing head up, we should get, well, okay, hold on. A block here. He should work from here to the linebacker and this back should end up blast blocking, right? We should be base here, scoop to the linebacker, scoop across his face. Uh, I love, watch this halfback right here. He weighed about 180 and uh, he rushed as a halfback for 1,700 plus yards this year, but he also was a great blast blocker. Now, Again, same guy that you saw on the first screen. Notice he's a little too far forward. That alignment is critical, critical, but watch his attack. He gets in there, attacks, runs his feet, and keeps on the block. Uh, just a tremendous play by the young man. Again, now we're running it. Same series, believe it or not, guys. Uh, we ran power and blast back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. All right, nothing's changed. You got a 3-4 look. All right, uh, I think they reduced down over here. But everything else is head up, so he should be blocking here, right? 
the center should be blocking. I keep saying blocking here, and you guys, when you saw me a couple weeks ago, uh, I'd say block here, and it would never happen. So I'm going to try this a little bit better here. So you should have your center here. He should end up on the backside linebacker. His goal is to get on this guy and turn him out, right? We should get him on that play side linebacker, and this guy should be controlled by my quarterback. All right, now that puts him on him. Your free safety is the free player to go ahead and make the play. Again, another great block by the halfback. All right, another great block by the halfback. That is key. All right, 3-3 stack. <clears throat> okay, this is against a 6A team this year. We're a 3A team. And uh, again, we're in a twin set. We got a tight end up top. And what we should be getting from the looks of things right here hang on, is my tackle here, my center here, right? On, backside. He should work to that linebacker. He should work play side to that linebacker. Back should end up on this linebacker. He's a free runner, but should be controlled by my quarterback by running keep. All right. So, again, we've got everybody blocked and everybody controlled. Tight end should step and hands, but I believe he ends up running downfield for some reason. But, again, we're talking about 16, 17-year-old kids. All right. Now, nothing more frustrating uh, than watching a receiver jog and watch the play and if he blocks his man this is a touchdown and i believe on this series we end up having to settle for a field goal because he's just kind of jogging all right if he makes that block we score and like i said i believe we settle for a field goal on that play instead of a touchdown one thing i love to do is get in a lot of different formations so you've got um, guard tackle tight end over here you got center guard wing back tight end over here and we're going to run blast strong now this is a young guy he was placed in because of injuries so again rule on outside outside rule for tight end on outside outside so he should probably block him he's going to end up blocking him he should bucket step get in a hole and blast block the play side linebacker guard should end up uh, on the Mike linebacker. So we're going to try to diagram this out here. All right. On outside, outside from what I see is here. He should be on this guy here. He should bucket step, get in on that linebacker. All right. Guard should work to the nose to this linebacker. Backside guard should step play side hard and work to this linebacker. And we should high wall over here. And chances are we are going to scoop this guy with the tackle. Again, I don't remember the concept that we put in. And he is now my sweep back. He should get a head and shoulder fake and come this way. Now, you see my halfback hobbling the play before he ran buck sweep and actually broke his foot. So that is why we're not getting a really good sweep action from him. Not his fault. Okay, he ended up out, and he was out for the rest of the season. Okay, so again, let's take a look real quick. I'm not going to diagram it, but we've got our center. has got a nose. He's going to play him. I think he's a little bit shaded backside, but he's on, so he's got him. Tackle's got this guy. He's an overhang. All right, he should be controlled by the quarterback. We should slide and get in this gap and pop that play side linebacker. Uh, guard should work nose to the backside linebacker. Backside tackle should scoop, which he does a really good job getting across his face. The only thing I don't like, if you look at my play side tackle, he does position step a little bit. I'd love to see him run his feet more. And that way he doesn't get an arm on that guy. Now, one of the things I love to do is take a hard-nosed kid and, and go into what we call our Buffalo set. So he is the play side kickback. So there's no halfback in the game. We were getting light on halfbacks. They were real young. Uh, so I took my toughest guard and I put him in the backfield. All right, he's going to read this block because they're in a 50 look. 
All right, so he's going to read that block. If he comes in, he's going to go outside. If he turns him out, he's going to come inside on this linebacker. Quarterback should control him. We're in an unbalanced set. So the quarterback, again, there's no sweep back. He's going to ride and should carry out his keep fake. Run that back real quick. Again, watch, watch that bam back. He's reading the block. That guy steps inside. He reads that. He goes outside, picks up that linebacker. All right. Super job by that guy. He was a little tight. All right. Let's take a look here. We're in an unbalanced set. Okay. We're in an unbalanced set down here to the bottom of the screen. It is a 3-3, but what they've done because it's an unbalanced is they've shifted their front. And what we're going to get, if I'm not mistaken from the angle I see, we are going to get a Tex concept. So you're going to get down here. We're going to get kick here. We should be blasting here. The center should end up play side hard because he's not covered here. Guard should end up, right? And then we should scoop to that backer. All right. So let's take a look and see if we actually get it done. We got the Tex up top. He's down, kick, right? Probably a little more penetration than I'd like, so that means his angle is probably a little too deep. Young halfback, he comes in, takes care of business. You see the center up on the mic. And their uh, backside linebacker gets into the line of scrimmage. Our backside tackle picks him up. All right. And... Uh, Here's why the ball should be in the outside arm. Because we get a strip right there and we get lucky. The ball gets knocked out of bounds. We end up kicking a field goal uh, a couple plays later. All right. Now, while this is not a linebacker walked up, what I do want to do is make sure that you understand that all the gaps are canceled. He's in a shade. So whether he's in a two eye or a shade in this gap. So you got a gap canceled. He's in a four eye. B gap is canceled. Our guys are smart enough to recognize that we have to give a down call. So what happens is he's going, my guard, come on. All right, my guard's going to block down. My tackle's going to block down. This back should skate through here and pick up the linebacker. Okay. These guys should be handled with the blockers here and should also be controlled by my quarterback's action keeping it. All right, you see the quarterback taking off, getting outside. My slot gets inside position. I'd love to see him stay on that upfield shoulder. It's not a superior play. We pick up five or six yards, but you can see how they play that off, right? There's that play side halfback. He's stepping straight, he's reading coming off that down block. All right, freebie for everybody. While we're talking blast, which is ISO, we also run what we call smash. Smash is, you know, ISO is one back on a linebacker. Smash is two, get, two guys on a linebacker. So what we really should have is this guy who is a young guy. All right, he's a young guy. Um, he hasn't been a starter the whole season. He should go outside and try to box this guy. This young man should end up coming through and boxing that guy. So you get two on that linebacker. All right. And uh, I think he, he gets caught up inside. We still end up with two on him. And just so you guys know, the, watch the back, the play side guard on the linebacker. That's pretty, pretty special. Little. All right, so that right there, guys, is smash. Smash. I'm going to go back here. I know we're a little longer than normal. It's 25 minutes, which I was kind of concerned about because uh, just trying to get used to using some telestration as well as talking through some things and diagram stuff. Guys, again, if you have questions, if you got comments, hit me up, Coach Bishop at CoachBoard.com, as well as either Twitter, DM through Twitter. Go ahead and leave comments on the YouTube channel. Uh, next week, our goal, finish the Blast series. I want to talk about our complimentary run plays off of Blast as well as our complimentary pass play. So, again, appreciate your time. Hey, RTDB, baby.